I want to talk to you today about what I'm going to put inside of my greenhouse. Uh, well, not only my greenhouse, the garden as well, but mostly uh, what I want to put inside of my greenhouse. So in here are all seeds that I have either saved from last year or purchased throughout the winter. So let me show you what I have in here. I think I may have gone a little overboard. I know to some people this may not seem like much, but really I have never purchased so many seeds and to be quite honest, it's the first year I've ever started anything from seed. Except for my sweet potato slips, I've never uh, purchased or grown anything started from inside the house. So I'm, I'm a little excited. I'm not going to go through all of this with you, but just to show you a few things, um, I have purchased something that I absolutely love and it's broccolini. Something else last year that I tried and I feel not one came out of the ground was uh, like a yellow beet and I love beets and I love yellow beets and I was really disappointed that these didn't grow. But something that I did do last year and you might say what am I doing starting beet seeds inside? Usually you just sow beets outside in the garden and that's true. However, last year I was at a garden center one day and I saw that they did have beets that you could buy that were like, you know, to be planted outside. And those actually did really well in the garden. So I really want to try again with the yellow beets. So what I've done is I've started some inside and I will show you those in just a minute. And I do have all kinds of peppers as well so that I, I never succeed growing these in the garden that I really want to put out in the greenhouse. And I've got some stuff here that's going outside in the garden and it's just in my seeds like turnips and squash. I've got my spinach, my kale, I've got some rosemary because I love rosemary. Um, I have some dill so I can make my dill uh, green beans again that were absolutely an incredible hit, especially with my daughter um, and her fiance. Like they just, I think she wiped me clean. So I am going to be planting my own dill this year and making a lot more of those uh, beans, those uh, dill beans. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check that out. They're actually really good. And also, uh, if you haven't seen that as well, I also have a video on fermented carrots and I have dill in there. So I'm going to put the dill to good use this year. So this is what I have so far, so far for seeds. I have been watching a lot of uh, videos on YouTube to try to figure out how to, you know, plant inside a greenhouse, when are the best times, and I gotta tell you, it's still not really clear in my mind when I should be planting outside in my greenhouse. It seems a lot clearer when, you're, when it's time to plant outside in the garden. They're always gonna say, you know, you start your seeds indoors four to six weeks. Uh, before your last frost and then you make sure when you plant them outside that all risk of frost is gone. I'm imagining that inside a greenhouse I can probably put it outside sooner than that because the frost won't fall on the, the tender new vegetables and damage them. However, I know that for optimal growth your soil still has to be at a certain temperature. So. If you have any comments, any suggestions at all, please don't be shy. Put them in, this, in the comment box below if you have any amount of advice. I did purchase a few things to help me along in helping me germinate and plant these seeds. I, like I've said, I'm new at this and I just wanted to make sure that I did everything right. Now, I may have gone a little bit overboard. I purchased a grow light. I purchased as well two heat mats. And actually this morning I purchased a second grow light because I realized that when I, once I have, once I separate all my, my seeds from inside the little uh, containers and put them more individually in bigger pots, my light, my one light is not going to be big enough to accommodate all that. So did I really need all these bells and whistles and lamps and heat mats and everything to start these seedlings inside? It all depends on who you listen to, which blog you read, which YouTube video you look at. Everyone has their own opinion. I can tell you for sure, my father does not have any grow lamps to start his tomatoes inside and they do really fine. Let me show you what I've done down in the basement to set this up. I just cleared out a shelf and I, it's, a, it's a perfect little corner actually to start the seedlings. So let's go look at what I've done downstairs in the basement. This is what I've set up to help me get my seeds to start growing to help with the germination process. I actually just took a shelf that I had in the basement, re cleared off one shelf, and then attached the light, the grow light, as you can see, up on top. And 
I don't know if you can see it, but I do have here as well a heat map right there on the bottom. And I have all that plugged in just on the side. Everything that I have planted here has been here ex exactly six days. I planted it last Sunday. So just to give you an idea how things have really grown fast. So the first thing that came out really quick was what I have back here, broccolini. Back over here are the beets. Over here I have some onion that are just starting to come through. Over here I have some rosemary where there may be something coming out, not quite too sure. The broccolini, as I say, that was the first thing to come out. And I'm really excited because right, what you see coming out here, as you can see, there's orange peppers, cayenne peppers, and some other kind of peppers. They're called fat and sassy or something that are here. Those aren't coming out yet, but these two last rows of peppers are starting to peek through. So I'm really excited about that. And over here are a different variety of tomatoes. Most of them are Roma. Some of them are Sun Gold, they're called. So those have, are coming out really nice. I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of my setup downstairs in the basement and how I've set things up. There's just one more thing that I want to show you, however, and that is how some of my vegetables have lasted throughout the winter. So I don't have a root cellar, I don't have a cold room or anything to put my, my harvest from the previous year. So the way that I do it, the way that I preserve my sweet potatoes over winter, uh, my squash over winter, is I just put them in boxes, protect them from light, put them on the floor of my basement, but even the temperature in my basement is not that much cooler than the rest of my house. But I just want to show you how well they've done over winter. As you can see, I had a really good spaghetti squash harvest last year. And so now we are, this is, I'm filming this in March. So just so you know, to give you a little bit of timeline. And these are spaghetti squash that I harvested last fall. So they're still absolutely beautiful, firm, incredible. And like I say, they're not in a cold room. They're just in a box on the floor in my basement. So these have lasted really well. Now my sweet potatoes, you know, it's not something that I got, you know, a whole ton of. But look at still these, how beautiful they've lasted throughout the winter. I always make sure to keep the nicest ones that I've gotten to, um, to make slips out of. So I have some creating slips. Some of my potatoes are here in my kitchen window and some are under the light downstairs in the basement. And I wanted to see if there would be a difference with the ones that I have under the light and the ones in the windowsill. And actually the ones that are under the light are actually already starting to make slips one week in, where the ones in my windowsill have not yet. Now is this just a coincidence or is it really the light that's helping it along? I'm not sure, but um, anyway, so as you can see, these potatoes have lasted absolutely beautifully throughout the winter. Remember this one? When I pulled it out, it's, I still have it and it's still absolutely beautiful, lasted well throughout the winter. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on how I'm starting to set up for my greenhouse. If you do like this video, give it a big thumbs up, hit that like button, and uh, don't be shy. You can subscribe as well, and be sure to check back again soon to see what I've got going on.